from all the interviews, you will have a behavioral interview, you will have a technical interview when they will give you some coding problem to solve. Then uh, what I realized a lot of companies are asking for is to talk about your project as well, which is something that you don't have to do on, spot, on the spot because they will let you know in advance that they want you to talk about the project. And it will be something that you already have done, um, for example, from Springboard, right? So this kind of presentation can be done beforehand and uh, you know you don't have to worry about it in terms of the interview when, when the interview comes. Hey, Julia. Thank you for joining us. Um, so we're going to talk a lot about your new software engineering role, how you got that job and all of that fun stuff. But why don't we start with what you did before? Um, so what was your old career? Hi, Cole. Thanks for having me here. Yes, definitely. So before my software engineering job, I was working in hospitality. I finished my studies in hospitality as well. And my whole career for about eight years was in hotels, managing different hotels. Uh, my very last job was um, being a part of a team to open a hotel in New York. Okay. So very different from software engineering. Um, what led to you, you know, deciding to switch careers? Was it something you had thought about for a long time? Was it a COVID related situation? How did that come about? Mm -hmm. So a lot of different things, actually. And um, uh, well, COVID was a part of it, too. But I was thinking about switching my careers for um, a while before COVID happened. Um, my Originally, my father was actually a software engineer. And uh, he spoke with me a little bit about what he was doing, you know, growing up. Um, my school, my like my middle school and my high school was math oriented, uh, where I had a lot of you know intensive courses uh, like math oriented courses and also I started a bit of programming over there but it was a very on a very basic level you know in middle school you don't do a lot um, but you know I used to like to travel a lot and that's why I chose hospitality instead of uh, software engineering but I kept kind of going back each year to what I originally had interest in, which was programming and, and coding and creating something that I can, you know, see on the screen. That's like a very basic explanation of what I was interested in, right? Um, and, you know, and when pandemic happened um, and my hotel that I was supposed to open did not open on time, so we had to close, um, I told myself that, if there will be a perfect time to switch my career to what I originally wanted to do, then right now would probably be the time. And so this is when I started researching more about um, different schools and boot camps and what can I do? How can I learn software engineering in, uh, you know, in how much time will it take for me to do that? And what do I need for it just in general to start off a career and do a career switch? Then, um, yeah, and then I just decided to to do it. It was a very on the spot decision, but a lot of things led to it. Yeah, I mean, I guess you're kind of lucky that you you had some experience as a kid or in school, or you you at least knew that you enjoyed it. Um, because for a lot of people, I think they decide they want to switch, and then they have to figure out if they actually like it. <laughs> they they you know it's like they, the salary and the remote work and all the other benefits are great. Um, it's just a matter of like if someone's a good fit and they enjoy it, but you already knew that it sounds like, um, but you weren't like yeah. building applications or anything, um, you know, beforehand, like how much experience did you have? Barely. I was barely building them. So um, in the specific terms, what I knew is basics of HTML and CSS. And I had a course in my university to build a very, you know, basic app, make a, uh, let's say a ball jump on a screen or something like that. That was the maximum I was doing. Um, so I kind of had this base, like I knew the HTML tags and what they mean and stuff like that, right? But I didn't know more than that. Um, and so since my career was absolutely different, I didn't kind of 
progress myself into this direction. I kind of forgot about this until I kept going back. And um, at some point, I realized that, you know, in order for me to know in 100% that I really want to do this, maybe it would be a good thing to um, do, let's say, a free course online, which a lot of free courses online exist to, um, you know, to, to try yourself out and to see if you actually enjoy you know, going deeper into engineering and seeing if you actually will like that. So I started from those kind of courses before um, searching for a boot camp and realizing that, you know, my interest that was there is still, it still is there. And this is something I would like to do. Was there ever a point where you were thinking you could just sort of like self-teach yourself or study on your own? And what made you decide that you needed you know, to find a boot camp or a program or something? At first, when I started with those free online courses, I thought that it was, it would be possible for me to teach myself. uh, Because, you know, I was already teaching myself using those free courses. However, I felt like I needed some guidance in terms of um, what exactly should I be learning right now? um, Because I wanted to get, uh, you know, current you know, like, I wanted to get the specific um, knowledge that is needed in current times of what um, people want, what companies want, who do they hire, with what qualifications. And so I felt like I needed guidance um, for somebody to, you know, to, to tell me what what is current now, what do I need to do in order to get um, into the industry? Because Self teaching yourself, I think it's great, and I think it's it's absolutely not impossible. You can do that, but you will get better results, um, you know, with with some guidance in terms of this. What were you looking at, or you know, what was most important to you when you were comparing? Because there's many, like tons of similar programs and competition. Was it the you know self paced? Was it the mentors? Was it some other thing? Um, How do you make that choice? Definitely, yes. So um, a couple of different things maybe to springboard. First, um, online education wasn't um, new, a new thing for me since I was already kind of self-teaching myself with those free courses before. So the fact that Springboard is online was not a problem for me at all. Plus, it was during pandemic. So technically, all boot camps at that point were online, uh, no matter which boot camp was offering, you know, um, classes not online before they were all online regardless at that point but um when i spoke with an advisor from springboard they told me exactly um how the course is structured in terms of mentors how much time do i get spent to with mentors um there were advisors that could advise me every day through a chat on you know on my code or any of the questions that I would have I liked um the structure of the curriculum as well because um I think it's very important to not only look through the material or watch the videos of the material but then practice as well and what I realized from the advisors before I started is that there's a lot of practice material after each unit um, and this was something super important for me because um, you know without practice I think in this industry and not even industry but in software engineering just in general I don't think a person will get too far with just watching videos and that's it so you have to practice um the amount of projects that um they said that i would come out after this boot camp was uh, really great and and really important for the resume as well especially for the person who is switching careers and who technically won't have apart from those projects won't have any relevant experience in the industry at all so that was something that was very interesting for me and uh, just coming back to mentors um they mentioned that mentors are actually people who are working currently in uh, in a bigger companies and so i felt like it's, it was very interesting that you know you as a you know as a springboard right um decided to take mentors who are actually working in the industry so they have an on the spot and current experience with um you know with everything that they're doing instead of if they were just to you know teach as a French GM course. So uh, those things were really important for me. And, you know, last but not the least was the deferred tuition program as well. 
that was really important, especially uh, that during pandemic, a lot of people from hospitality, you know, they lost their jobs as well as myself and uh, having a deferred tuition program and having to pay only after finishing the boot camp was a very big deal for me as well. Cool. I, you kind of answered the next five questions I had. <laughs> I was going to ask about mentors yeah. and ask you about uh, the tuition program and deferred tuition. So let's just dive into the what the reality was like once you started. So you began, you actually enrolled in, when was that? Uh, early or late 2020, mm-hmm. like December? Yep, it was December. Okay. And then how um, how long did it take you to, to finish the course? I finished the course in about six months. Um, I know it's a bit earlier than the full course itself. The full course is nine months, but I also um, tend to be extremely strict on myself. And so I was completing course every day and I decided to have almost zero weekends in between. So that's why <laughs> that's why I was able to complete the course so fast. Um, but, you know, at the same time, I think while learning a lot of concepts in software engineering, you have to be very persistent. And, uh, you know, it, it's okay to do that sometimes. Um, it depends on the person. I know some students with whom I was speaking in Springboard, they sometimes they needed um, like a week or two week of, you know, vacation, not a vacation, but break from the course, which is, by the way, something another thing that Springboard offers, which is really nice because sometimes I felt like I need it as well, Um, you know, and um, yeah, no, that's, that was great. Okay. Now I have some rapid fire ones now about uh, the curriculum itself and and your projects. So let's start with, was there a favorite topic that you had just, or, you know, technology, a tool that you learned uh, that you just enjoyed? Let's see. I think it was the just testing library. (laughs) Oh, you like testing? <laughs> um, it depends. Sometimes it gives me troubles, but sometimes when everything goes smooth, then I really enjoy it. <laughs> it depends on the library as well. <laughs> yeah, that's a topic a lot of students, I think, would probably say is the answer to my next question, which was, is there anything that gave you trouble um, in the course or you know, something that was particularly tough? Um, I mean, you made it through all of it, but is there something that sticks out to you? I would say the data structures and algorithms unit was the most difficult just because it packed so much different information in such a short period of time. Um, And it's not specifically in this course, it's, you know, I've realized that in the other courses online that I've done as well, it's just a such an important topic to grasp. And it needs a lot, a lot, a lot of practice um, and understanding to, you know, in order to go online and do some problems and all the hackathons with those. So I think that was the most difficult and important, the most important topic to do, because I don't think that um, without this unit and without this topic, I would be able to get a job. So I think this is the most important thing ever. (laughs) Yeah, it's... (laughs) It's a hard one as a student and also, honestly, as a as the instructor, as somebody writing the curriculum, it's one of those topics that's just not very exciting for a lot of people, but it's also like we have to include and it comes up, uh, especially um, when you're interviewing, you know, trying to land that first job, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is probably what I want to talk about next. Uh, you are employed. Yeah. You did get your first software engineering role. Um, what was that process like from the end of, did you say August, roughly, when you finished up the course? Yes, yes, correct. Mm-hmm. From the August until when you received your offer, um, you know, how how difficult was that process for you? And especially when it came to interviewing, um, how many places did you interview at? Did you have any notable failures <laughs> or successes before you got your first offer? Yes, yes. So um, in those couple of months when I was looking for a job, I think the most difficult part was um, the, you know, the the fact of an unknown. It's like when you're going for a technical interview, because not all of them are technical. Some of them are behavioral interviews when you're starting interviewing with a company right away. But then when you're getting to the technical part, you'll just never know what questions they ask. And it's always very stressful. So it's not interviewing itself, but it's just not knowing what kind of question to expect. And um, 
everything that you can do is just to practice, to be honest. There, um, there's a hacker rank website and, and lead code website that, well, both of those actually helped me a lot with um, knowing approximately which direction to go with questions and what things I need to work on. So, um, and according to my mentors as well from Springboard, they advised me to go to those uh, places as well to kind of um, try to get me up to speed with all the questions that people are currently asking or companies are currently asking. So that was the most difficult part. Now, um, I interviewed just, just in general before I got a job, I've interviewed with about 10 different companies and, um, I had about four to six interviews per company before I uh, got my offer. It's <laughs> um, it, a lot of work. It is a lot, yes. But also um, right now, and I'm just going back to it, there there are some things that the new students can do to, you know, not to get yourself worked up on the amount of interviews, but actually do good and be prepared before they actually come. Because... Um, from all the interviews, you will have a behavioral interview, you will have a technical interview when they will give you some coding problem to solve. Then uh, what I realized a lot of companies are asking for is to talk about your project as well, which is something that you don't have to do on, spot, on the spot because they will let you know in advance that they want you to talk about the project. And it will be something that you already have done, um, for example, from Springboard, right? So this kind of presentation can be done beforehand and uh you know you don't have to worry about it in terms of the interview and when when the interview comes so um my advice for new students is to definitely prepare after the graduation is to definitely prepare the project um with you know with some kind of a presentation to talk about it great so that was interviewing then you accepted a job right and let's talk a little bit about the the job and the role so first where where do you work um, I work at a real estate startup based in Brooklyn called uh, North Spire. And what what type of developer, you know, title do you have? Is it full stack or front end, back end? Yes, no, I do everything. It's full stack. Um, I'm a software engineer. I started full stack from my day two. Um, I started having projects um, on the front end side, which most of it was um, React and TypeScript. And on the back end side with Python and and Jest and all that, um, writing APIs, writing the front ends for it. Um, since it's a startup, you may you may know it's it's a very busy environment, but it's a very supportive environment as well. So uh, it's been going great so far, and uh, I think I've made a great decision to you know to do this whole career change and to choose Springboard as well as uh, as my starting point. <laughs> nice. Um, well, what about the day to day? I mean, I, I don't know exactly what you were doing in hospitality, but my impression is that the hours are pretty strict or, um, it's certainly not, you can't do it from home. <laughs> uh, and in this new role, are you working remotely? I am working remotely now. Yes. Okay. And do you have a more relaxed schedule or is it pretty similar to before? So what they're asking us is um, just to be online in the Eastern time zone times, you know, so, um, so it's, it's pretty relaxed, you know, let's say if I, you know, if I need to go to a doctor, I have a doctor's appointment at, at noon, I can definitely do that, right? I will let them know and I will go ahead and do that. But working from home is definitely a, a totally different situation from my previous job when um, I couldn't even step away sometimes for lunch. <laughs> so it, it's a really different situation. It's, um, you know, again, it's a startup. So you work longer hours sometimes, you work shorter hours sometimes, but you have this schedule when you are working kind of, you're managing your own time. So even though you need to be online at a certain time, you're still managing your own time. And you mentioned you originally wanted to get into hospitality with the idea of traveling. Um, I, obviously, things are still not back to normal in the world, but do you plan on traveling with this job? Will you be able to or or have your sort of priorities changed? Since this company is fully remote, yes, I'll be able to travel. Um, the only requirement, honestly, that they have is just to, you know, uh, be in a 
in the United States <laughs> um, currently, um, you know, this may change later on as, you know, as we onboard maybe people from different countries. I don't know. But um, in terms of traveling, yes, it's pretty flexible. I have um, unlimited days off right now, which, of course, doesn't mean that I may not show up for a job. No, <laughs> it doesn't work this way. But um, but yes, no, it's it's very flexible. And uh, they make it a point to to make sure that everybody's comfortable with what they're doing. Everybody is, you know, doing very, very best that they can do. And everybody's happy with what they do, too. Great. Well, um, one more detail question everyone always wants to know about um you know salary and and how things change for you before and after and please only share as much as you're comfortable with but um how was there you know an improvement aside from being able to work from home and flexible hours unlimited vacation but salary wise um from your previous job to your current job did things change yes things definitely changed and uh what i can say you know is that the the salary improvement that I've had prior to to now is about 25%. Um, I don't mind sharing, you know, the numbers I used to make below 100 before it was around 75, 80. Um, and right now I'm making more than um, 100,000. So uh, it's definitely an improvement. Uh, this improvement happened with, you know, um, some research with six months off a boot camp and a very persistent, um, you know, nature, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It seems like you, um, definitely worked hard at it both within the course, but also just, you know, after graduation, even before enrolling, trying to figure out what course to enroll in and trying to do some self-study, um, which I think is important for people to, to realize, Unfortunately, you can't just, you know, show up and watch a couple of videos and get a job. <laughs> you still have to do a lot. Um, but congratulations. That sounds like a, you know, a, a big improvement in a, in a lot of ways over your previous job. Thank you so much. Yes, no, absolutely. Um, I'm very happy where I am right now. And just a thing that I must say, yes, exactly. For people who really are considering going to software engineering, um, you know, they're really, I, I hope that they will be happy doing that because you can't just exactly like you said, you can't just show up and watch a couple of videos and and you have a work from home and over, you know, $100,000 job. Um, you also need to make sure that you enjoy what you do because you will have motivation. You will have curiosity of knowing more. And this industry is really, really big. And if you actually enjoy what you do, you can work for yourself you can work for a company in any industry you like if you like fashion but you also like software engineering for example you can work as a software engineer in fashion right so you can be as creative in terms of your career as you can possibly be and that's an awesome part about it wow i mean you're <laughs> you're doing my job <laughs> that's very good uh nice speech there um well thank you so much for your time i really appreciate it can you do me one more favor? Can you just go get your dog for a second? Oh my gosh, yes I can. Oh, hello. I would show you my chickens, but I don't have them accessible right now. <laughs> um, but this my cat will have to do. Can you say hi? Say bye. Say thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Cole. Have a good rest have of your night. Have a good one as well. Bye-bye.